useful tool to analyze some uh, experimental data in soft matter in general, but in part, uh, exemplifying with some results in liquid crystals. Okay? Uh, the team, uh, I have to, uh, I don't know how to do you. Uh, but precisely got all this. Okay. No, but uh, I, I can do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so sorry. The battery. Okay. Then I can use here. Here. Okay. Uh, perhaps. Uh, okay. This is the the team. Uh, at. Uh, sorry, I I'm nervous with this, but uh, this is the group. Uh, my colleagues uh, working in some of the papers. I will. I I collected some results to illustrate the model. The two Italian, and I would like to thank you, Professor uh, Daniel Liart, <laughs> in the organizing committee for the, in, the kind invitation. Uh, and uh, the, the idea is to show uh, that fractional calculus may be used, as, as I told you, to modify uh, a very uh, well-known model in imp impedance spectroscopy. We extend this diffusive model to the field of fractional calculus and use it to fit some data and uh, to show that uh, probably it could be a, a good idea. And uh, this extended model we will call PNP-A, A for anomalous. Anomalous what? Anomalous diffusion. PNP is Poisson, Nernst, Planck, diffusive model. And then we have extended it in some ways the field of uh, fractional calculus. Uh, you know very well uh, that in the book two of the Rerum Natura, Lucretius described uh, <laughs> Brownian motion. And it's, it's interesting that uh, his description is correct. If we assume that atom in, in his brain means the same for us, the description is the correct one, qualitatively. But uh, he observed, I have no time, of course, to describe in details, but he observed uh, the, the smoke in the uh, sunlight of this kind of, f f the, the, the light entering by a hole in a, a dark ambient, and th that particles, and he describes correctly. And then we know that uh, a way to look for uh, diffusion is to, to look at mean square displacement and how it depends on time. And it depends on time in that way, uh, t uh, to some exponent alpha. We know that if alpha is one, we call it normal uh, diffusion. This mean square displacement is an indication of uh, under, underlining, under. Uh, um, underlying process uh, of diffusion, but normal one, and according to the values of alpha, less than one or greater than one, uh, we have uh, anomalous diffusion. But diffusion is a family business, because some very kind uh, <laughs> Uncle Albert started to, to, <laughs> to describe it in the marvelous year, uh, uh, he was the first, perhaps, to give uh, a good uh, quantitative theoretical approach to the Brownian motion. And then we have, in, in a very less, uh, uh, very low level, to continue the, the, the family business. Uh, of course, for this reason, we have to move to anomalous diffusion, because the normal one, he understood. But when... Uh, he understood the, 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 the diffusive, uh, diffusive process. He obtained a di usual diffusion equation. And uh, we, if we analyze uh, on dimensional grounds, this is not a rigorous, but only a guess, 
z square, which is the mean square displacement essentially, goes to t by uh, dimensional analysis in this equation. Then we expect from on dimensional grounds that this is a, 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 a usual diffusion. Then we can, uh, of course, uh, conjecture that if we introduce something wrong, like a derivative of order gamma in T and a derivative of order alpha in the position, we expect on dimensional grounds that uh, the, the mean square displacement goes in that way. And then we may expect that uh, that exponent is not one if gamma is not one, nor alpha is equal to two, okay? The fractional derivative of in space is not, uh, the, the order is not two, and the uh, fractional derivative in time is not of the order one if we uh, are looking for some underlying anomalous diffusion process. And then, of course, we have a fractional differential equation. Okay, is this important? I don't know, but we can try to understand why. Why you have to use fractional calculus? Well, we call fractional calculus, it's, uh, as, uh, it's not a good name, of course, but uh, it's the consecrated uh, uh, name. And uh, uh, mathematics, as Freg uh, told, uh, the mathematician only discovers something and give it a name. <laughs> Who discovered this? In a letter from Marquis of L'Hôpital, who paid for Bernoulli published books in his name, to Leibniz on September 13, 1695, the same year in which Purcell was composing some beautiful uh, music, asked, sir, is there any meaning in a, a fractional derivative? And Leibniz answered it correctly, but he was a philosopher, and then he made some constant equals to one. <laughs> of course, a theoretical physicist, no? The, the, the answer is correct, apart of this constant, okay? But if I continue this, I, I won't finish. Okay, since then, fractional calculus became a, a problem, became a, 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 an area of investigation. Who deserved the attention of great mathematicians? Someone, Euler, it was enough if Euler touched the argument. It's enough, only Euler, because Euler did everything. Then <laughs> it's enough. But we have also Laplace, Fourier, Abel, Liouville, mainly Liouville in this field, Riemann, and so, Lohan, Letnikov, and a very clever guys. But the first to, to give uh, a definition, a useful definition, was Lacroix. Lacroix started with the idea, if I have to calculate, uh, if we calculate the uh, normal derivative of a function y equal to x to m, we can write expression 3. But if we put m equals to n1, we obtain the usual result. But if we put m equals to 1, I am uh, trying to calculated the derivative of y equal, equals x, but any one-half, then a derivative of order one-half, we obtain uh, the result 4, which is, apart uh, the constant, the same result of Leibniz in the letter to L'Hôpital. But if you calculate, for instance, this derivative of a constant, it's not zero. It's not zero. Is it wrong? No. It's, it is another thing, <laughs> another kind of operation. We know that, but I have no time to enter into this detail, but it's uh, some operation that acting uh, on a constant, some derivative operation that acting on a constant, does not yield uh, zero. Then, it, I, I have another kind of uh, operator here. Now, after a lot of history, and mainly due to the work of Leoville, which is not so well uh, underlined in the books, 
we have uh, this uh, monster as a, a, a possible operator, uh, fractional operator, fractional derivative. And Caputo, Michele Caputo, who is still alive, at least two months ago, but uh, close to 100 years, uh, Michele Caputo introduced a, a modification of the Hima Liu Vili operator, uh, such that, uh, among other things, the derivative of a constant is zero, and the boundary conditions for an initial uh, value problem can be given in terms of usual function and uh, integer order derivatives. Because otherwise, using Hima Liouville, you have to specify boundary conditions in terms of fractional derivatives, which is a complicated uh, thing to do from the physical point of view. OK, we, uh, I am interested here in showing you that we can apply this to study impedance response of some samples. And then, impedance, as you know, you apply uh, a sinusoidal voltage of small amplitude. And then we have a periodic dist disturbation. We can uh, extend the limits of the derivatives to the minus infinity, and both operators essentially give the same result, Riemann, Liouville, or Caputo. Then we use both in our generalization. These are the ingre ingredients. But to analyze impedance, we use the PNP model, Poisson Nernst Planck model. This model consists in Considering two continuity equations for positive and negative ions. Then we imagine a soft matter sample or a liquid crystal sample or an electrolyte cell in which charges are moving, positive and negative and neutral. We can also consider neutral species because we will work later in full dissociation. But we can formulate the, the model in general. You have negative, positive, and neutral particles. And if you have charge, you have to impose Maxwell equation, Poisson equations, to determine what is the field at any point in the sample. And then you, in general, have to face three couplets, or four couplets if you consider neutral species, couplet uh, partial differential equations su subject to some boundary conditions. And then these equations have this, this form here. No? I will neglect the, uh, later the neutral species. But when we impose uh, the uh, Poisson equations, we have to be sure that the current, the total current in the circuit, in the sample, uh, which is formed by two parts. The first part in, 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 in blue is the conduction current, the moving charge. And the second part is displacement current, the uh, genius guess of uh, Maxwell. Oh, 185, five, or 100, uh, 1865 in a very beautiful and complicated paper. But anyway, if you put this current, you can demonstrate that in the model, uh, J is solenoidal. It means that the divergence of this vector has to be zero. This is a property of Maxwell equations. It's important. Then, in impedance, we uh, will simplify the model because we have two, two limiting surfaces. We apply the field along this, uh, along a, a direction perpendicular to this surface. And then the problem becomes essentially one dimensional. And then we have to be sure that the total current inside the circuit does not depend uh, on position, of course, because the current inside the sample has to be the current in the external circuit. This is a point completely neglected in the last 40 years in impedance problems. No one talks about it, but it's no one, which, no one who uses uh, PNP model. But anyway, we have fix at this problem, we impose this anyway. OK, that model is the usual model. What, what 
how, how I proceed? I solve that differential equation. I obtain the uh, density of positive and negative charges. I obtain the total current. And then I define the impedance. And uh, by using this definition, of course, the impedance is the potential difference in the sample divided by the current, of course, the current in the total circuit. Of course. Then this is measured in a, la a laboratory and uh, in uh, as a function, for instance, of the frequency of the applied field. And you get some curves of z as a function of omega. You ask for real part, imaginary part, and so on, and you have your analysis. Now we move to the fractional field. We introduce, uh, we, rewrite, we write the equations in, in terms of a derivative of order gamma. We show that anyway, if you do this nicely, in a very crude manner, we have a problem, a very big problem. The current is uh, solenoidal, of course, but we have modified the displacement current here in the red, uh, red uh, uh, term. This means that the Maxwell equation is, has to be modified. It's uh, too pretentious to do this. No? But we, uh, it's not the only way. We can do this modifying only the conduction current putting the fractional part on the conduction current. Why we can do this? We can do this because Fick's law is phenomenological. It's not fundamental like Maxwell equations. Fick's law was a, a, a very good, but an invention of Fick. We use just the first term. We could continue to use Fick's idea, decomposing the vector j in terms of symmetry components, and introduce also the third derivative of the concentration. For instance, in this case, diffusion equation will be fourth order. If you are, uh, uh, if you are glad to, to joke with this, we can continue also <laughs> with uh, uh, odd terms in J. Then we can modify conduction current. It's not the only way to. Okay, we modify, we extend for the fractional. Uh, uh, field, uh, but if you are not uh, happy with just one fractional derivatives, we can promote a superposition of fractional derivatives in the diffusion equation. This diffusion equation will be called uh, fractional diffusion equation of distributed order, because we, you, you can uh, superpose uh, several different diffusive regimes in the same problem. It seems complicated, but the techniques are always the same. And then we do this, and we have to solve this kind of equation. For a slab, like the one I illustrated before, we use the linear approximation, because these equations are non-linear. But since I am trying to use the impedance technique, I will apply a small amplitude voltage. In this case, I can linearize, linearize safely the diffusion equation. And at the end of the day, I have two diffusion equations coupled with the Poisson equations. And I mix everything, and I solve it. But this is not physics, because if I, I, I want to do physics as, as I want, I have to specify very good boundary conditions. Of course, the physics is, is in the boundary conditions, basically. Then I uh, propose some boundary conditions. Here, I am free. I am free, of course, using logic, some uh, common sense, and so on, and some physics. But I can put, for instance, a kind of boundary condition in which I insert a kernel. <laughs> a surface kernel, memory kernel. Why not? But you can insert also a super superposition of kernels. Okay? Then you have a mathematical tool in which you can also see, if, well, you, uh, you, you can also look for surface like behavior. 
after doing some of these calculations, you obtain, for instance, among several others, an impedance in closed form this way. Two points deserve some attention here. Kappa uh, in the denominator and phi, phi uh, they are uh, the, the, the consequence of fractionalizing my uh, calculations, as, of course, beta and others. But these two are the consequences, uh, the prices I pay to do this. Then, of course, I have some freedom to show this. <laughs> I am uh, I'm free. If I am uh, an awfully crazy, I can, I can do crazy things. But if I try to move on a, 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 in a health ambient, I can, uh, I, can, uh, I can use, for instance, two regimes, the normal one plus some anomalous one, for instance. Uh, then uh, I have a model, because uh, Z is an analytical expression, very general. For a very general boundary conditions, the uh, uh, only uh, requirement for this boundary condition is to have uh, an integral transform well defined. But I ha we have a lot of family of good functions that uh, uh, fulfills this requirement. And then we can obtain a tool, a setup. If you are an experimentalist, not uh, because fractional derivatives, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not thing for the normal people. Okay, I agree. <laughs> but uh, some softwares you use are not for normal people. You use software. You buy the software. Okay, use this, put it in the mathematical MATLAB, put the final formula, and analyze. You see that your effort will be in the good direction. Because after you analyze your experimental data, you are doing this in the framework of a physical model. A drift diffusion model in which Poisson equation is solved, in which the electric field profile inside the sample is known, and then you have, from the point of view of physics, you have an alternative model to the most used model in this context. The most used model in this context are equivalent circuits. You Pick your sample, you, you, you pick up your sample, perform some measurements, and then you invent an equivalent circuit. But this equivalent circuit, the most successful equivalent circuit, uses the same idea of, Tol of Ptolemeo. <laughs> I am joking here. Uh, use a device called CPA, constant phase element. Instead of to have a resistance, uh, resistance, or a capacitor, or an inductor, you put something that interpolates between three uh, by adjusting a coefficient. And you, construct, you can construct a circuit, putting this element with something like a quant of Ptolemeo, or a epicyclo of uh, Iparco, if you want. With this device, you can explain everything. Everything is exaggeration. Then I invite you to think, instead to put this, let us use fractional calculus in a physical model. This is the idea. The rest is uh, very important, of course, because we have analyzed some experimental data. I, not, I don't have. I, I know that very competent people, no, I, I show you the photography, did this. I, I am very proud because most of them, unfortunately for them, have been my students. But they are brave. I am a, a only survivor to them. I tired to not rovinate, and it seems that I was very successful. And then uh, try, uh, these are some curves. For instance, uh, Michelle, um, some days ah. I would like to investigate the impedance of the solvents we use. OK. She uh, has chosen uh, 18 different solvents and measured uh, uh, the impedance. Experimental data and 
fractional model. And the, the fits are very good for, for all solvents. No? Uh, I do not enter any details, of course, because uh, this process, but uh, I have some papers you can, uh, you can read if you are interested. And then the fits are of this kind. But in liquid crystals, one possibility we consider that recently is, uh, is I consider diffusion in liquid crystals, because we know that in the synthesis process, I have to finish, no, my time is. But uh, if I, if, uh, I, I fabricate, a uh, synthesize a, a, a sample of liquid crystals, I, we know that some ions remain. This is a problem even in constructing displays. Because, of course, you, I, I am looking for a liquid crystal display here, and uh, if you want that, that, that point, that pixel, has some properties, you have to apply precise difference of potential. But if, you, if your system apply this potential, and there are some ions there, the field that uh, the molecule feels are not the one you need. And then you have to recalculate rapidly, goes to the battery, pick more energy to do the job. And then your battery is rovinating in, in a very rapid manner. Then this is an important problem. Uh, of course, no, we don't solve it, but we, 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 we understand this. The idea is, if we investigate diffusion in uh, modulated phases of liquid crystals, for instance, smetic phase. In smetic phase, show in uh, B and, and C, you have smetic homeotropic or planar anchoring, and you have layers. If the diffusion has to cross layers, is one problem. If the diffusion goes through the layers, another problem. If you have a cholesteric with a pitch, you have another problem. How big is the pitch? The pitch the influences or not the diffusion. All these answers are complicated, but you can do, you can pre prepare samples, you can measure impedance, you can connect these uh, results to the conductivity, for instance, of the sample. When you do this, I am finishing, uh, you obtain, you can, uh, by knowing the conductivity as a function of omega, you also uh, will be able to connect it to the mean square displacement of that process. Then you have also a statistical description of what is, uh, what, uh, what these ions are doing. And then this kind of model is very important for the response coming from ions. Okay? Because we are talking about the diffusion of ions. And then, prepared some sample. These are only experimental data but we perform some uh, feats, and uh, we considered what happens in the low frequency region, because this is complicated, and we know that in the low frequency, the response came from ions. Because, of course, if you have an ion, Carmelo, let me say, the name of the ion is Carmelo. Carmelo is in the sample. It fills the field. If the field is, is lower, you, it dances with the field. But the field is very rapid. Now, then, in high frequency, another effects are important. In low frequency, ion response are very important. And then we obtain also a lot of parameters uh, of the, the sample. And, uh, OK, uh, we, we, we done this in, this in the last year in, in these papers here. Uh, and I can, uh, OK. This is publicity the first book about these things, the second book about these things this year, and probably no, the last. I don't know if I will survive, but anyway, thank you. <laughs> Muito obrigado. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Luis, for the sorry, very sorry. erudite talk. Um, we have time for one quick question. 
Okay, Pablo. Uh, can, can go there. Can you infer the geometrical form of the plates by using those equations? If if I have some uh, some special, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I, I was uh, uh, like some example, geometry. Yeah, yeah, of ah, the plates. Yes. Uh, no. In general, we use the, the geometry of slab shape mm. because it's okay. Uh, in, ex in, in, in the laboratory, it's not always this here, because sometimes you put uh, simply the electrodes inside the sample. But anyway, if you put inside the sample two, two points, two, two <laughs> no, not, not surface, two, uh, anyway, the, the flow will be uh, along this direction between this. Then, even if this geometry is a little bit restrictive, it's en uh, general enough to cover uh, experimental situations. Otherwise, you can formulate in three dimensions and try to solve it numerically. To do analytically, you have to have some kind of geometry of this type. Okay. Thank you again, Luis. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you.